Months of increasingly violent and volatile protests in Hong Kong have rocked the international business community. And there are fears that the city's unique spot as a financial center will be undermined by the chaos. And for more on the global impact of these protests, we're joined by Professor Mauro Aguilin. He's a professor of the International Management from the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. Professor, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, firstly, what do you make of the, the fallout then from what we've been seeing in Hong Kong, how it's unfolded? Well, from a business perspective, it's obviously something that uh, will uh, be very negative for the image of the city. And businesses sooner or later will start making decisions. Uh, so this has been going on for months. And obviously businesses don't have the patience uh, for this. Uh, so unfortunately, I think uh, there's going to be some um, negative consequences uh, for the city. You mentioned that businesses don't have the patience for you know, the turmoil and the volatility that's going on. But Hong Kong is known as a financial hub. How much has that changed in the past few months ever since you know, these protests erupted? Well, change is slow, uh, obviously. Uh, nothing dramatic, I think, uh, from the point of view of uh, you know, shifting activities outside of Hong Kong is going to happen uh, quickly. Uh, but I think this adds to the overall trend in which uh, Hong Kong that used to be pretty much the only city in that part of the world uh, where business could be uh, conducted, uh, you know, freely and so on and so forth. I think that's going to, uh, you know, start changing very slowly in the minds of the decision makers at major financial companies and also multinational firms. It's not just financial services. Hong Kong is also a hub for doing business. And it is also a logistics hub. Uh, so from all of those points of view, Hong Kong stands to lose, even if nothing happened by way of protests, because other cities in the region are growing, are becoming more sophisticated. Well, let's talk about some of them then. What in your mind are other sort of financial hubs, if you like, that, you know, will seek to perhaps, it sounds horrible to say, but will sort of benefit from Hong Kong sort of in this turmoil? Well, some people mention Tokyo because uh, it has a, uh, you know, long history and it's a very large financial uh, hub. Uh, but obviously the Chinese would like to develop Hong, uh, Shanghai as the alternative to Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, now, that's years away because obviously the legal framework uh, uh, also the movement of capitals, uh, the non-convertibility of renminbi, there's uh, many obstacles mm. to the uh, establishment of Shanghai as a major financial center. But sooner or later, give it five years, give it 10 years, give it 15, Shanghai will become bigger and bigger and they will challenge Hong Kong's uh, you know, situation or position as a major financial center. And so these events are just sort of moving things along into that direction then? I think uh, this represents an acceleration of a trend that was already going on. Mm. You mentioned that it was um, a trend that was already going on. Is perhaps, we, as you mentioned, there, inevitable that it will eventually happen. But can Shanghai, you mentioned that, you know, a couple of years, but can Shanghai actually really replace Hong Kong? Is there one city that can actually replace Hong Kong? Because after all, if you look at Hong Kong, it is in a very unique position. It has its own tariff-free, uh, you know, deals with America for it and, and even now for the UK. China doesn't have any of that. Oh, absolutely. It will take a long time still. It may take uh, 10, 15, 20 years. But I think it's going to happen. And let's not forget that Hong Kong just 50 years ago was not really that important a city, right? Uh, and Shanghai 80, 100 years ago was a major financial center in the context, of course, of an economy in China that wasn't as sophisticated as it is today. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, these things do change. They evolve. And once again, Hong Kong didn't have that much competition maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago. But now competition is growing. And uh, sooner or later, I think Hong Kong will have to um, you know, surrender some of its uh, businesses uh, to other parts of, uh, of the region. So regardless of the protest then, do you not, there's no way back for Hong Kong now? No, there is, I think. Of course there is. Uh, hopefully, for all sorts of reasons, not just business reasons, mm -hmm. these protests uh, will you know, come, uh, you know, calm down and that things will go back to normal. I think everybody would like that to happen. Mm. Now, of course, the protesters have certain demands, and they're expanding, apparently, the list of demands mm. as time goes by. And that's also uh, something that we need to watch very carefully. Uh, so I think there is a future for everybody. I mean, I'm not saying that Hong Kong will disappear from the face of the earth. Of course not. Uh, but I think Hong Kong's preeminence as a business center, as a financial center, the, one, the kind of uh, preeminence that has, enjo has enjoyed over the last uh, 20 years or so, mm. I think uh, those good uh, days may be over. Well, let's, uh, I want to pick up on something that you mentioned as well about you know, um, China, but there is a trade war, a trade you know, a situation that is going on between the U.S. and China at this point. How is that affecting everybody else um, besides just China, you know, the region? Well, it is a trade war with global implications. We're talking here about the two biggest economies in the world and the two largest trading nations. So it has implications for everyone. 
And by the way, there are some beneficiaries of that. Uh, so Vietnam, Bangladesh, uh, other countries in Southeast Asia uh, are now seeing increased investments uh, and sourcing by companies that are essentially saying, well, China is no longer such a great place in which to make our products or assemble our products. Uh, so all, you know, you know, in all of these disputes, all of these frictions, there's always winners and losers. There's no question about that. And by the way, it's very hard to anticipate exactly who the winners are going to be and to what extent they're going to win and by how much the losers are going to uh, you know, suffer. Um, so um, it's an open question and we're in the midst of it. And uh, as with uh, the Hong Kong protests, with no end in sight. Yeah, certainly it does seem like tricky roads or tricky winds to navigate, certainly. Thanks so much for coming Absolutely. in and sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, Professor Mauro Guilin from the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania.